This is Viterbi Voices. Coming to you from the University of Southern California, Viterbi School of Engineering. We're here to give you the inside scoop about research, classes, student life, and so much more. All of these shared from our students, faculty, and other members of our USC community. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Turby Voices, the podcast. As usual, I am one of your hosts. My name is Paul Ledesma. I'm the Executive Director of Undergraduate Admission here at the USC, the Turby School of Engineering. And hi, everyone. My name is Emily Powis, and I'm a senior studying biomedical engineering. And who's over there? Uh, Maya, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Maya. I'm currently a sophomore studying industrial and systems engineering. Okay, and uh, Maya, well, what do you bring to us today? Yeah, a podcast that's um, pretty special to me. It actually uh, features one of my roommates and one of my best friends here at USC, and it's focused on exploring the engineering plus business side. So these are people that either came into college or in college realized that they were interested in business or um, something to do with entrepreneurship. So they tailored their course plan and the things that they did in college to fit that interest and I find it something I'm interested in myself, and um, I'm sure that certain, some listeners may be as well. Yeah, absolutely. We get a lot of interest of students saying, oh my gosh, I want to combine so-and-so with business. I want to do something with business. Uh, it's definitely a, a popular option, and students do it in all sorts of ways. So I'm glad you're talking about lots of ways to do it, um, because I mean, I think last time I checked, there's over 20 different business minors that are out there. Uh, just alone, not to mention just different activities and, and also majors in the engineering school that that uh, kind of combine this already, like computer science business. And also, I think the, the perfect combination of engineering business is your major, my industrial systems engineering. So it already kind of combines it, which is nice. Yeah, absolutely. I have um, an industrial systems engineer, a CSBA student, and um, someone who's a chemical engineer with a minor in entrepreneurship. And we talk about everything that you just spoke about from um, the two unit classes in Marshall to minors in Marshall, certificates and all of that. All right. Well, let's get out of the way and talk all about, let's look over to Maya to talk all about engineering and business. We'll see you on the other side. Hello, Claire. Um, it's super nice to have you here on this podcast today. And for all the listeners right now, um, Claire is my roommate, and I have been scheming for a way to get her onto the podcast for a while now. Um, and yeah, I'm super excited for you all to meet her. So Claire, um, would you mind telling the, telling the listeners about your major, your involvement at USC, and what you're interested in? Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, my major is computer science and business administration, and that's a joint major at USC. It's not a double major. I'm also an applied analytics minor. I am planning on getting my master's here through the PDP program, which is where you take master's classes during your bachelor's, and I want to get that in data science. I am very heavily involved in the Society of Women of Engineering. I'm a mentor there, and I'm also on a committee for the student affairs. I also work at the USC K through 12 Viterbi STEM Center. And my role there is to create curriculum on engineering, coding and cybersecurity and getting that implemented basically in the local K through 12 schools. And then I also do a lot of private tutoring and that's just kids from my hometown. And I do about 10 hours a week of that. After that background, I want to go back to where it started. So how did you know that you wanted to study CSBA at USC? Yeah, so CSBA is a really cool major. Not a lot of schools have it. Um, it's pretty hard to major in computer science and also in business. Those are two pretty hefty majors. And so it's really cool to be able to basically combine them and make it very doable in four years. I have always loved logic and puzzles and kind of the more tech stuff. But I knew from the beginning that I did not want to be someone who coded 
10, 12 hours a day all the time. And so I've always loved books and reading and talking with people and teamwork and business. And so I really wanted a major that combined both of those and gave me more of a multidimensional uh, curriculum. And then applied analytics was just because I love data. I think it's a really powerful tool. And so I wanted to be able to incorporate that in my studies. Okay, awesome. Um, so yeah, just, just me knowing you and your data, um, do you want to talk a little bit about your internship this past summer? Yeah, so I worked at Fortinet, which is a pretty major cybersecurity company, but my role was marketing automation. So again, kind of taking the high tech and also more of a business approach. And so I was, my day to day was basically creating emails and running A-B testing on them, which is basically where you, it's like an experiment where you randomly send out two different types of emails and there's one difference between them. And you're trying to see what these little differences can do to make your emails have higher open rates and click through rates. And with the ultimate goal of driving business and having kind of fine tuning your process as much as you can. And so I love that. I thought it was super cool and it really played into kind of the logic puzzle side of me trying to figure out what is the best way to go, but it did have a real business application to it. Okay, yeah, I think that's super cool how um, you took that quantitative perspective and those logic skills that you learned as a CS major and you applied that to an internship that would normally be someone who's studying business. Um, I think that's a really cool part of CSBA. So um, I guess not only did your business and engineering complement each other like in your job, but how do you think your business and engineering classes have complemented one another at USC? Yeah, great question. So for CSBA, the basically how it works, in case you don't know, is that you take business classes with the business, the Marshall kids, and you take CS classes with the Turby, the CS kids. And so there's very little overlap in your actual classes. But for me, I've loved basically being able to, on one hand, develop my technical skills and on the other, really work on my soft skills. And, you know, after a few hours of CS homework, sometimes you really need to switch to another type. And so it's been great to be able to really diversify what I'm learning and what my homework is and studying and all of that and the people I meet too, which has been really cool. Awesome. So this next question, it can be business, it can be engineering, or it can be whatever you want it to be. But what has been your favorite class that you have taken at USC thus far? Okay, so I have two and neither are engineering or, uh, or business. They're actually two unit courses, which I am such a proponent of because it doesn't increase your tuition if you're just taking the normal amount. And so the first one would be activism and advocacy. And that's a MDA 300 Dornside toolkit class. And that was really fascinating because we had all these different speakers come in. We had state senator, we had people in DC and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And you could just hear about how they've let activism and advocacy take on these different roles in their lives and how it doesn't have to be your full career. And there's just a lot of ways to apply that. So I've loved that. And then my second class would be one I actually took with Maya and some of our other friends and it was ballroom dancing. And that's so fun. And yeah, it was great. And your parents will probably love it if you take it. So that was really fun too. Seriously, I cannot recommend a class enough. I think USC has so many cool classes, like what you were saying, the activism class and the ballroom dancing class. Like we have these world renowned professors who have like danced in movies and people who are just notable figures internationally and we have access to them at USC. So I think that's pretty cool. N nice to hear about. Nice to hear about you taking um, advantage of all of those resources. So for this one, I guess comparing your experience versus my experience as an industrial and systems engineering major at Viterbi, what are some differences you see between your major and ISC? Yeah, so you can probably add to this and speak to your perspective, which I would love. Um, but from basically living with you for the past year, I think I've gotten a little bit of an idea of the differences. So first, like I said earlier, CS class, for CSBA, you take your CS classes and you take your business classes. And they're just normal CS classes and normal business classes. So the idea is basically that half your curriculum is CF, CS, half is uh, business. But for ISC, basically all your classes are kind of a mix of engineering, CS, high tech, and the business application of it. And so, 
yeah, so basically both are, both achieve 50-50 in different ways. CSBA, I would say, has a lot more depth in computer science, but a lot less generally in engineering. There's less requirements in science. You don't have to take out three. And um, yeah, so it's probably more conducive if you're interested in going straight into software engineering. And then the other difference I would say is that because you're taking these classes with computer science majors and business majors and all these other different types of majors, your classes are going to be bigger than they are in ISC and you're not going to develop the same relationships with your professors most likely than you are in ISC. And there's less of a cohort feeling because you're not just 30 or 50 of you guys, there's way, way more. Yeah, I, I definitely do think that the class size point is big and yeah, I think it might be easier to develop relationships with your professors as an ISC, but I guess, Claire, you're, you're a great model for um, people who have still developed relationships with their professor. Like, I remember you and your accounting professor. Well, thank you, Maya. Yeah. Um, well, the reason I think that you can develop your relationships really easy in ISC is because Maya does it amazingly. So maybe she's just uh, one case. But yeah, so my accounting, I've gotten another internship for the next summer in accounting. So again, business, but Hopefully I'll be able to use my uh, tech background still. And I'll be working at BDO, which is a major accounting and consulting firm. And I actually got that from a professor who basically just liked me and uh, sent my resume without me asking and sent a, a really nice email blurb to a bunch of the top accounting firms recruiters. And so that's just a one way that networking in USC can just be really helpful. And it actually works, the Trojan family is a thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I, I really like hearing that story. Um, it speaks speaks a lot to the power of the Trojan Network. And yeah, I think it's super interesting to hear about um, your perspective on the differences between ISC and CSBA. I would totally agree. And I think going into college, I certainly was considering both. And I know you like would have considered both had you known what ISC is. <laughs> and yeah, Definitely, I think- yeah. <laughs> Both um, both the majors can have people that end up in similar or identical roles, identical outcomes. So just about thinking about what classes you want to take and like what exactly you want your postgrad life to look like immediately after you graduate. Yeah, definitely. I will say one thing that seems really cool about ISC too is it seems like you guys use a lot more of the technologies that data science uses, and you guys are a lot more prepped for that in comparison to CSBA, which you wouldn't necessarily think, but it is true. Yeah, I think it's worth um, looking into the different types of programs that each major uses. Like I know, for instance, we go more in depth into SAP and other like enterprise business softwares versus you guys learn a couple more coding languages like in C. Meanwhile, I just had like an introductory Python course. Definitely. All right. And on the grain of post-graduation, do you have any idea what you want to do or explore as a career after you graduate? Yeah, good question. Um, so the answer is not 100% sure, but I'm really interested right now in product management and basically any role where I can do what CSBA is basically and combine tech with a more business focus. So whether that's doing software engineering for a few years and then transitioning into a managerial role or going into tech consulting I don't know, but those are definitely some windows that I'm really, really looking to pursue. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and it's cool because I would say that I'm looking into some of the similar things. So mm -hmm. just shows that there's not there's no one path to a certain career in the future. Um, and yeah, you can gain a bunch of different skill sets from a bunch of different majors or all right. So finally, like looking back in hindsight or forward, um, what advice would you give to students who also want to incorporate business into their engineering education? So I would say first do your research at the different majors available. There's a lot of business minors, there's CSBA, again, really unique to USC. There's ISC and didn't know that existed. So in hindsight, I would have told people to look into that. But uh, if that being said, if you don't want to commit to something as large as those, oh, yeah, and I think they also do have certificates. I know at least on the tech side, they have certificates. But um, if you don't want to commit to something as big as that, you can always just take a class. They have some two unit classes that you can add on, or they have a really cool three unit one in the business school that's tech, uh, technology entrepreneurship, which is basically how to be a product manager, 
manager, sorry. And, um, or you can even just join a club on entrepreneurship or business. So there's definitely a lot of ways to do it, but it is something that I would recommend doing, if not to make your course load a little bit more interesting. Yeah, no, definitely also emphasizing what you said. Um, there's no one way to do it. Like there are many different things that you can add. And um, what I think in particular is really interesting is the certificate program through the ITP department. So that's the information technology department. And um, so you actually your minor in, in data analytics, it can also be a certificate. And it's also um, has some of the same classes that I have to take as an industrial systems engineer. So um, you could you could really mix and match and decide like what sorts of software or programs do you want to learn or how exactly you want to tailor your technical education with that program. Completely. The ITP program at USC is so, so cool. And a lot of the people that do it aren't from Viterbi. They're usually majors in other things. And so and I think a lot of them also do come from the Marshall Business School. And yeah, they have ones on blockchain and cybersecurity and data science, and you can do a minor or a certificate. And then they have intro classes in Python and Adobe, Photoshop and MATLAB, all these super cool things. So yes, do your research. There's so many opportunities at USC and it's really just what you make the most of. My other piece of advice too would be, um, and I know Maya does this. I think I actually got pretty inspired from Maya to actually do this, but I like to just constantly be applying to things at USC, whether that's looking for clubs or constantly looking at Connect SC and just applying to things. Because if you apply, you're, if it doesn't work out, you're still in the same position as before. But sometimes it does work out and you land in really cool opportunities you would have no idea even existed. That's what happened with me in the K through 12 STEM center. And yeah, right? Like just, and it's just a great skill to learn also, to learn to be rejected and to put yourself out there and to get better at interviewing. So those would be my two pieces, my two pieces of words of wisdom from uh, two years at USC. Yes, I love that. And I think that last piece of advice is really applicable for absolutely anyone and myself included. I know I, I certainly um, need to learn how to embrace failure and be okay with um, learning through like a painful experience of failing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Maya and I have been talking about that, but definitely, right? Um, rejection you should never take personally and it's just an opportunity to get better and grow and learn so yes that would be you always get rejected and it happens so you just got to take it with a grain of salt yeah absolutely yeah words of wisdom for anyone listening to this podcast well um claire i guess wrapping up this was super fun to talk with you and um i'm sure this will be super helpful for anyone interested in computer science business engineering or just listening to stories of a student from Viterbi and their experience, so. Well, Maya, I had a great time, as always. But oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Right, hello, Christina. Thank you for joining me on the podcast today. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, I'm super excited to get to know you and also excited for anyone who's listening to this to also get to know you. So let's start right off the bat. Um, would you mind telling me about your major, your involvement at USC, what you're interested in, anything about your life? Of course. Um, well, my name's Christina and I'm a senior studying chemical engineering and my emphasis is in sustainable energy. And I'm also completing a minor in entrepreneurship. Um, I'm originally from Dallas, but since being at USC, I've been involved in a couple of different things, including Engineers Without Borders and serving as a freshman academy coach. Um, but all throughout my time at USC, I'd say I've definitely been really interested in the sustainability part of engineering and looking for ways to apply that to my career post-grad. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and I'm sure Engineers Without Borders is super applicable to what you're interested in. Um, is that true? Yeah, it's been it's been great. Um, it's Viterbi's only humanitarian organization, and I really loved the opportunity to connect with different people from all different engineering majors and backgrounds to work on kind of real world applications um, of our coursework. 
All right. I love that. Yeah, I was a part of um, Engineers Without Borders for a little bit my freshman year, and I, I really enjoyed it. So I guess the first question right off the bat about your educational background is how did you become interested in entrepreneurship? Yeah, I think going into college, I wasn't exactly sure what entrepreneurship or being a business student meant, but I kind of knew that I was interested in that apart from my engineering um, background. So I really became interested in entrepreneurship from some guest speakers that I heard from my freshman year in a business class. And I was just really drawn to the flexibility and the customized customization that entrepreneurs were able to have in their own life. Um, I've always dreamed of owning my business, my own business one day and just seeing things, hearing from my dad, who also has an engineering background, but worked more in the business field. I kind of realized that, you know, having a really good idea about how businesses and, and startups work and operate is probably really great knowledge to have, regardless of what field you're in, what field you're in. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Um, was this class you took freshman year? And um, what was this class? And did you elect to take that? Or was that a part of um, your minor you had already declared? Yeah, I think going into the Turby, I kind of knew that I wanted to explore the business school and Marshall a little bit more. That was always an interest of mine before um, coming to USC. So the class that I took freshman year was a two unit course in the spring and it was called economics of or foundation of business economics or something very very basic just a two unit course about business finance economics and that kind of started my my journey or I guess the beginning of my entrepreneurship minor I wasn't really sure like what minor program I wanted to look into at Marshall so I took a general class that would cover a lot of different um requirements for minors so when I was in that class and they brought in guest speakers that's when I became more interested in the entrepreneurship side of the program um which if you're unfamiliar they basic the entrepreneurship program and a lot of the entrepreneurship classes they bring in lots of guest speakers startup founders into the class where you have a really open space to ask questions and hear more about them and that that interaction and that way of learning and hearing about other people's experiences just made me want to keep taking similar classes yeah that's super cool um, we i had done an interview with someone who was a computer science and business administration major previously and um, they talked a lot about the two unit classes and i personally also find those super fun um, i think like USC and Viterbi like that's a great opportunity to explore a lot of different things that you think you might be interested or in or just like in general that you want to get to know more about um, do you think there were a lot of two unit classes that were required for your entrepreneurship minor I don't know how many I would say are required but I think there's a lot of flexibility in where they give you a certain amount of units and you have a set of core classes to take and then the rest you can fill with electives. And one thing that I would say is I think Marshall has so many two unit electives. I've taken a couple for my minor, um, but kind of like you were saying, it's a really great opportunity to like learn a little bit smaller, like less than a semester's worth of information, but still, still enough to make a whole class out of. Um, so yeah, I would say there are a lot of two unit classes, not necessarily a requirement, but you can really like mix and match to build what you want. All right, great. And would you say overall that um, the process of adding the minor to your engineering course load, would you say that it was pretty manageable? I'd say it's definitely manageable. I just had to be pretty diligent about my planning. I freshman year was when I started thinking about adding a minor and I knew that chemical engineering like many of the other engineering majors has a high unit um, count for the whole major so I knew that based on the flexibility of what elective spaces I still had open that would probably limit what type of minor I could do um, I actually started out in business but switched to entrepreneurship when I realized that I wouldn't have enough space I think it was pretty manageable in terms of you know, adding the extra courses to my load and like the workload that that was, I think the 
The tricky part was just finding the slots to take it in my four-year course plan. But with the help of my advisor, that process went pretty smoothly. Okay, fantastic. So you're taking these engineering classes for chemical engineering. So I'm guessing a lot of chemistry, physics, and yet you're also taking business classes for your minor. So what are some differences and similarities that you've noticed between those two classes? Yeah, I'd say there's definitely more different than similar between my engineering and business classes, but I have really loved that. All of my business classes have been set up in a format of a big, long semester group project, uh, which was a little intimidating when I first started. And I realize now, like as a senior, that's more similar to my capstone classes for engineering. Um, but my business classes were one big group project with lots of intermediate presentations, but something that was really similar between the two, which I really enjoyed was the sense of community and collaboration. Whether we were working on these big group projects together or giving feedback on the different business ideas and pitches, um, it was still the really a really collaborative environment that I experienced in my engineering classes when working on problem sets, homework assignments, and things like that. Okay, I love that. It sounds like the perfect complement to like learning a technical skill set in all of the engineering classes. Um, do you think it's made you, have you had any, I guess, team projects in your engineering classes as well? Yeah, so actually this semester I'm doing a big long group project for my capstone class for chemical engineering and we're design our whole class is split up into teams of six and we're all working on a gas to liquids plant that we're designing from scratch um so a very similar setup where we have one big goal for the whole semester and a group of people to do it with um and I'd say definitely my experience being in my business classes has definitely helped just with the group camaraderie and how to divide and orient tasks. Um, it's been really good. So with that unique combination, chemical engineering and entrepreneurship, how do you plan on like applying both of those fields or domains now and post-graduation? Yeah, I think... That's a really good question. Definitely something that I'm still trying to figure out um, moving forward. But for right now, I can say using chemical engineering and entrepreneurship, I'm really, really looking into and especially for my business classes, trying to find more engineering or chemi based ventures to pitch or think of a brainstorm about. Um, I think for post-graduation in my chemical engineering degree with a minor in entrepreneurship, I would love to work somewhere in industry or maybe a startup chemical engineering firm, something somewhere that's doing something, an engineering project in a startup manner, I guess, it, uh, would be a way to put it. Um, but I think really for entrepreneurship and what I hate, hope to take with me post-graduate graduation is the entrepreneurial mindset and always looking and finding pains and solutions in the market and how I could leverage my own engineering skills to like make, to bridge that gap. And so I hope like at, for the rest of my college career, I am continue to develop those ideas and that mindset so that post-graduation can really recognize the opportunities um, to jump in. That's a great way of putting it, the entrepreneurial mindset, like bringing that into what you're doing. Um, so you, you said in the beginning that you were interested in potentially owning your own business one day. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, awesome. Do you have, do you have any ideas for that right now? I don't I can't say that I've landed on my my perfect idea yet um but I definitely think that and you know when you're owning your own business all of those things come from steps of action and part of the entrepreneurship minor and the engineering plus that um is really heavily emphasized at the Viterbi school is taking action doing things like making progress so I hope um that after like after I graduate I'm and I'm thinking about all the opportunities in the business I can really take those steps and really use my engineering plus degree um, to to make it happen not sure what that business is going to look like though I love that yeah have you um, have you had any internships or anything in the past that you feel like you've applied your chemi and entrepreneurship 
or one or the other? Yeah, I'd say um, in my past experience with internships, uh, even though they might have been a chemical engineering targeted role, having an understanding of like business elements has really helped me in terms of just like knowing Excel, knowing how to format like statistical data programs and like seeing data and getting necessary meaning from it. Um, my freshman year, I worked for an oil and gas company in the summer and I made statistical analysis programs and definitely just being able to manipulate Excel that I hadn't had that opportunity to yet in my classes um, in engineering, learning that from the business really helped carry over. Okay, super awesome. Well, wrapping up, I have one final question for you, and that is what piece of advice would you give to students who want to incorporate business into their engineering education, just like you did? I would say definitely just give it a go and take a class in something that you're interested in. Um, everyone at Marshall is really great at, at helping you fit that into your schedule, especially if you're not a Marshall student. Um, I found like a really great experience between my Baturbi advisors and my Marshall minor advisors. So I'd say anyone who wants to incorporate business, just try it out, plan ahead, like start with one class and see what you like, and then think about what you might want to do in the future, but definitely just like do it like take the class do a two unit they're only half a semester so it's really really low stakes and a lot a lot less um a lot of different work than what you do in your engineering classes okay awesome and um did was your two unit class was that a credit no credit or a pass fail or was that for a grade i believe it was for a grade um, yeah, so that's something to keep in mind, but also a lot of some of those classes that you can take that are two units, I believe, are credit, no credit. Like I know that the dance class that I took was credit, no credit, um, and there's something called the Dornsife Toolkit class. So yeah, definitely a lot of different things that you can check out with low stakes. Yeah, and also a lot of them only go for half the semester as well. So if you're looking to have like an only six week class, um, definitely could be a good thing to look into. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast today, Christina. I really enjoyed hearing about um, your educational experience and all the stuff you're interested in. And I'm sure all the listeners did as well. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Right. Hello, Lou. Thank you for joining me today. I'm super excited to have you on the podcast. Hi, Maya. Thank you for having me. Okay, so I know you pretty well, but I'm sure that everyone listening does not. So um, would you mind first just introducing yourself to everyone who's listening? So talk about your major, what you're involved in, what you like to do. Sure. Uh, so I'm an industrial and systems engineering major on the information systems track, uh, and I'm pursuing a minor in finance as well. Uh, in my free time, I like to play basketball, play golf. Uh, last summer, I had an internship at a uh, high-tech manufacturing company called Numentum. Uh, my official title was Supply Chain Data Analyst Intern. And I got to do a lot of analysis using data in SQL and Tableau to automate a manual process in Excel. I had a really great time doing that. And I realized I'm really interested in the applications of data analytics, especially in the realm of industrial engineering. Uh, and this summer, I'm going to get to continue doing that uh, at Disney. I'm going to be working at the Disneyland Park in Anaheim uh, on the industrial engineering team. So I'm really looking forward to that. Yes, it all sounds so cool. I'm not going to lie, Luke. One reason why I thought of you is just because of all the super cool internships you've done. And I thought you'd be great on the podcast. And um, it's all super cool, um, especially like talk to Claire about data analytics as well. Um, so hearing both of your perspectives and how you're both interested in it, I thought would be really cool. So starting off, I'd want to know, how did you know that you wanted to study industrial systems engineering? It's a great question. Coming into college and applications, I was really on the fence between business and engineering. You know, I, I really thought that the technical aspects of engineering have the potential to really change the world, uh, but the business side of it really gives more of an application perspective. And I personally thought that ISC was a great cross between the two. The way I mostly explain ISC is applied math to increase efficiency in systems. And I think that 
it's a really interesting topic because you're able to do a, it's a subject that enables you to make things a lot more effective and cost efficient, but also time efficient. You know, you, the time that you put in may save hundreds of hours of other work others might have put in. And I think that that's a really interesting concept that has a lot of business applications. A second ago, I also want to go off of something you said. You, you mentioned that uh, you, Claire, uh, a CSBA major, talked a little bit about how she's interested in data analytics. And I think that there's a few differences between uh, ISC and CSBA that, although there's a lot of similarities, there's a few differences. So I, do you mind if I just go on, talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. CSBA will definitely give you more of a software engineering background that ISC definitely won't give you. Uh, you you'll get a little bit of the business will overlap. And so a lot of the, the roles and jobs after college will have a lot of overlap. But the bigger differences I see are the fact that industrial engineering will have more of a math and data focus. So you'll, the languages you'll be learning uh, will be R, SQL, Python, while in CSBA, you'll get a much more deeper dive into some of the more software engineering related ones. Uh, such as C++, C, uh, I don't know as many others, but they're more mm -hmm. software engineering focused while the ISC ones are much more data focused and are much more kind of connected to the more advanced math. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. And especially from what I know of computer science, yeah, it's a matter of just recognizing which languages do you want to learn and what do you want to do with computers? Because both use computers and business, but um, they can use them in different ways, or at least are predisposed to applying them in different ways. Yeah, and I'm going. I'm going to steal your definition for ISC. What was that again? Um, applied math for applied math to increase efficiency in systems. All right, I, I'm going to steal that in the future. Um, okay, so the, I guess the segues. So a lot of ISCs tend to go into consulting or more business roles after graduation. And um, like we were saying before, like a lot of people in CSBA or even business can go into those roles as well. So how do you think ISC classes integrate business into the curriculum? So I just to say they do integrate business a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Industrial engineering as a nature is very business focused. It gives you a little bit more of a technical background, but the whole point is often to increase the efficiency of processes in a business area. And so there's a really, really strong connection between the two that you're gonna see, even though it doesn't have business in the name. You know, we both took uh, engineering economy last semester, so we got to learn a little bit of Excel. Uh, you obviously won't get quite the, uh, the business analytics depth that you would get in a regular business major, but a lot of the analytical tools that we learn for data analytics are used constantly in business. So, um, Tableau, SQL, uh, R, a lot of the statistical and jump, uh, which we're learning as well. A, a lot of those are all used in, in business companies that are doing, because a lot, of, a lot of companies in a business sense need to do analysis to improve whatever it is that they're doing to see, do we invest more here? Do we change? And ISC has a lot of overlap with that. We just get more of the technical background of it. And so for me personally, I think that that's exactly what I want to do. I want to continue using data to improve business processes. And I think that the technical aspect of that is a huge leg up over what business majors get in their curriculum. They might be more prepared for, for finance or accounting, but the analytics aspect of business, uh, which is what I'm personally really interested in, is something that I think ISC prepares you very well for. Yeah, I, I would completely agree with you. The data-driven focus of ISC, I think, is really what sets the major apart. And a lot of people don't realize that. Um, going into college. A lot of people are like, I really want to work in like a quantitative business area. I really want to use math and technology and computers, but I want to apply that to a business area and work with like other people. Um, and I think IC is a really overlooked major that applies a lot of those different things. I, I definitely agree. The other thing I also really like about IC is the fact that we have both the info systems, information systems track uh, and the operations track. So as I mentioned for myself personally, I really like the data applications, but if that's not necessarily for you and you're more interested in the manufacturing side of operations, then the operations track will give you a much more manufacturing and factory focused uh, view and perspective on industrial engineering. That's also really, really interesting. And it was almost, I think, the uh, how industrial engineering was created during the industrial revolution. You know, you had all these factory lines and they needed to, 
you know, use the materials and manpower that they had in the most efficient way. Uh, and I think that for, I think it's more than 60% of industrial engineering majors end up being on the operations track. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think this, this is a little bit of a simplification, but you can almost view it as like the two sides, there's CS and BA. And in ISC, there's info systems and operations. And in ISC, you can choose sort of which side you want to be more involved in. Meanwhile, CSBA, obviously, you're going to take some CS, some business classes. I think the electives change, but um, there really is that parallel connection. I think that's interesting. I will also say that I don't want to oversell the amount of coding that you do in industrial engineering. You'll take a few classes on it, but it's very, you know, analytics focused, but very little computer science focused. The, C- the CSBAs will, will get the comp sci focus. And with that background, it's a much easier switch to go from computer science into analytics than it is to go from analytics into computer science. If what you want to do is software engineering, it's a lot more difficult to do that with an ISC major. I, I will be honest about that. If, you, if the coding you're looking for is analytics focused, it's great. But if, if, you want, if you're not sure about what you wanna do, you're between a software engineering or business role, or you want something in between, I will say that I think CSBA might be a better fit. Yeah, I think CSBA certainly could be a better fit. And another thing to possibly explore would be minors in ITP, I believe. So you can choose to minor in like computer programming. And if you really want to pick up a different language, maybe one that's taught in CSBA, but not necessarily taught to ISCs. So for instance, um, like C, C++, we don't learn that in our curriculum, but uh, we certainly could with extra spots that we have to take classes in ITP. So some people will take specializations. And also uh, my roommate, who's a CSBA major, is actually doing a minor in data analytics which is something that's integrated into our curriculum. Um, You can like pick and choose specific things that you wanna be involved in or if you wanna learn certain skills. Pivoting a little bit for a fun question, and this can totally be outside of engineering if you want it to, but I'm just curious, what has been your favorite class you've taken at USC thus far? That's a good question, kind of think. Mm -hmm. It's it's a hard one, yeah. I feel like I have different answers every day. I I think think I've got mine. ISC 150 uh, with Nathan Greenfield. I wasn't, so at this point, I wasn't 100% sure in terms of where I was leaning versus info systems versus uh, operations. I, th- I thought I enjoyed coding, but I didn't have as much experience with it. And so this was a bit of an introductory coding class for me, and I absolutely loved it. It's where, I mean, I like the coding class so much, I almost switched to CSBA. He, uh, it's, he's, Nathan's a great, great professor, uh, really went through in depth and all of the concepts and I just really enjoyed his class. He, he, he's a teacher who, who cares about his students to a very significant degree and wants you to succeed more than any other teacher I think I've had at USC. He, he's willing to go the extra mile with him and his TAs, just have a really great positive attitude about what they're teaching, which makes it so much more fun. And on top of that, I'm also a big fan of the concepts that they were teaching since I really yeah. enjoyed the coding. Yeah, I completely agree with you, Luke. Yeah, for context, anyone listening, Luke and I had this class together, um, I believe last spring. And yeah, that w- it was a super fun class. And I also was got super engaged in coding. That's when I also decided to go down the information systems route. And actually I use um, Python, which is the language the class was taught in. So I use Python in my research now, and it's definitely my go-to language anytime someone asks me to code or do a- data analytics. Um, so. Yeah, definitely super valuable skills and a super fun class. So it was also fun to take it with all my ISC friends, Luke. It was. I will actually think that's another thing I really enjoy about ISC is USC is a very big school. You know, a lot of majors are business. ISC, you're going to see a lot of the same people in a lot of the classes consistently. And so it almost makes a really big school feel a lot smaller because you have smaller classes, good relationships with your professor and you're seeing the same people consistently. And so if you want to get study group, it makes it easier to get study groups going and ask, you know, what classes are you taking this semester? Do you want to get together for homework for this class? How did you solve this problem? It, it, it makes the collaborative aspect of college a lot easier and really enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just an overall insight into college, but I think it's super cool to be taking classes where you know everyone around you is interested in the same or a really similar field. Um, so we can all we can all relate in the fact that we're interested in data and um, industrial engineering and applying that to business. Um, So I think that really, you can create really tight knit friend groups when you're all looking to do the same thing and you like similar things. I I, I couldn't agree more. That's, That's a perfect way of explaining it. 
Okay, Luke, so you got into your internship experience a little bit in the beginning with um, Disney and Lumentum, I believe. So um, the question that remains is what do you want to do or explore as a career after you graduate? Or what do you think? Honestly, I'm not 100% sure. And that's one of the really great things about industrial engineering is it's a concept that can be applied to so many different industries. I'm, I'm really excited about what I'm gonna be doing at Disney this summer. I'm really interested in the cross section between data analytics and industrial engineering because I really think USC gives, gives us a leg up in that regard. Because I mean, from what I've seen curricular, curriculum wise from other schools, I don't think there's as many others that will go in depth in terms of data if you're an industrial engineering major. And so I really enjoy getting to see the cross section. I think it's, it's a really cool advantage and a really cool sort of field that I really wanna see what I can do with it. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay, so wrapping up finally. So like, let's say there's, let's say there's a young Luke. Um, he's interested in business, also engineering, not really sure. So what advice would you give to students who also want to incorporate business into their engineering education? USC students or just students in general? Um, let's, let's start with students in general. I think that studying engineering in undergrad is, gives you a really, really big leg up in terms of the technical background that you'll have and almost anybody else when you go into a career field. Uh, there's MBAs and minors in business that you can get that will, from what I've seen, teach you the basics if you wanna make the switch from engineering to business. But starting with engineering and having that technical background is something that you'll be able to use for the rest of your life. So if you're on the fence between engineering and business, I definitely recommend engineering because there's so much to overlap between the two, especially in majors like ISC and CSBA, that you'll get the technical background with the business as well but don't give up the technical to do the business. Yeah, yeah. So I'm hearing you're saying it's a lot easier to like do your research and um, like find a major within engineering that provides technical skills, but also some business. So whether that be like majoring in ISC, majoring in CSBA, majoring in a different field and then taking like a minor in business or business classes rather than just taking business and trying to learn the technical skills on your own. That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. I'm a much, much better way of saying what I said, yes. Okay, no, 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 I, you, you said it perfectly. I was just making sure I completely understood. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I think there are so many different things that um, you can do to add to your education too that I think are um, interesting. So you can really form your college experience and make it whatever you want it to be, whatever you're interested in. I, I definitely agree. I also want to say this is this is no hit on business majors. This business is one of what you want to do. That's great. But if you're between the two because you really like the technical aspects and the engineering background, definitely do it. Don't hesitate. F find a way that you can integrate the two, but make sure you you do a major in engineering because you you can get the business in addition to it. But it's much more difficult to make business your main focus and get a little engineering on the side. Okay, yeah, thank you for your perspective and experience on that question with that um, advice. Yeah, Luke, it's been awesome to interview you. I think you're a very, um, a very interesting example of all that you can do within ISC and um, how you can just tailor your education to whatever you like and whatever you want it to be. So thank you again for letting me interview you. Of course, thank you for having me. It's been fun. And we're back. Maya, I was wondering, so you mentioned you were interested in business, but I was wondering what, how do you see yourself combining business in the future, like your ideal Maya in like 10 years? Yeah, um, I think a lot of what I'm looking forward to doing after college has to do with business. Um, so my major industrial and systems engineering, as you've heard Luke talk about in the podcast, um, it integrates business into the curriculum. So I find myself in 10 years um, I would love to be in a managerial role, working with people on a technical project, but um, kind of taking care of more of the business side of that project. Uh, I think that's something that I would be really interested in. So as of right now, that's my answer as to how I'd like to apply <laughs> business to my future. Super cool. I think that's what a lot of people think that they want to do, and, and definitely they, they will do. Uh, I'm always the one that kind of just breaks to them, like, you know, you don't need business classes to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Like it's, 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 people always think like, oh, well, I want to go into engineering, but I want to be a manager. I'm like, yeah, that doesn't necessarily need business classes. Um, 
it, 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 it's much more about, you know, what you all guys, you guys get out of, you know, leadership opportunities, uh, the, the way that you uh, incorporate different types of coursework into your engineering degree. I think that's one thing that people skip over a lot of the time is that because our curriculum is so interdisciplinary in nature with our general education program, our writing classes, communication, et cetera, our students end up in those managerial roles altogether. And if we're talking about executive leadership, and that's where MBAs come into play. Um, and, and so that's that's where this idea of, of expanding your ideas of business sometimes doesn't necessarily need to be in the undergraduate realm. I always want to throw that out whenever we're talking about engineering and business is that, you know, if you have other interests, there are other things you can do and you will still excel in business. Uh, taking business classes isn't necessarily it unless you really, really like those types of classes like accounting, and finance and organizational behavior. And, and, and some people do. Uh, I'm, I'm one of them. I, I like those types of, of, of coursework. Uh, but there, there's lots of options out there. So I always want to make sure we round out the conversation and talk about how when people want to go down that road of managerial stuff and like, well, I, I just don't want to be the engineer alone. I'm like, absolutely. And that's, that's what our students end up doing uh, mm -hmm. down the road for sure. Yeah. I couldn't agree with you more, Paul. Um, definitely something I'm looking at as I'm not including any, um, any business minor or anything like that, but definitely looking at an MBA down the road and um, feeling like I get a good sense of business, even within my ISE classes. Have you ever thought about, and I'm not trying to talk you into this. I'm just curious if you thought about it or, um, if it's crossed your mind, but the engineering management MBA or not MBA, but the master's in engineering management. I have. Yeah. Um, Alex is in it and she talks yeah. pretty highly of it. There's also another, um, another progressive de degree program that I'm looking at. That's um, a little bit like it's also between ISE and business. And that is, I believe the product management. Yeah. One like that with that yeah. sort of design. That's um, cool. So I think that's a little bit of a more technical um, engineering one that kind of swings more in the, engineering tech side rather than the business side yeah, the absolutely. master's program so looking into that but we'll see what i end up doing sweet well yeah there's i think the bottom line is that there's so many different options and i think that's kind of the point that i, I really didn't make very well or a second ago which is when students have you know when you want to go into lots of different things there isn't a single path mm -hmm. i think that comes up a lot in in our podcast no matter what we're discussing uh, whether that's the ideas of medical school, you know, Emily, and the idea of, of what someone wants to do with a particular future in mind. People always ask us, what's the best engineering degree or what's, what should I combo that with? And uh, it, it, there's never an answer because we can all come up with multiple examples of these, these winding paths that are not concrete and people kind of jump between them all the time. And it, it's much more about how someone shapes their experiences and you can't necessarily predict that going into college. It's about being open to ideas, being about trying different things, engaging in different opportunities and diversifying the types of people that you're around, the types of experiences you want to have, and ultimately also doing well, you know, and so going after things that you enjoy because you do them well, that, that's a big deal that I think always needs to come up in these types of conversations. And I think that it's clear when you when you hear these students talk about it, that they're doing something that they like. They're not just doing it because it's like a grind. And that's what they're supposed to do because they have to check off this box to get some sort of prize down the road. Mm -hmm. Well, I've bored you guys to sleep. That's good to know. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just, we, I feel like I, like that really summed it up well. I think like, I don't really have a business background, but yeah, going into a big reason why I went into en engineering was my parents were like, you can't mess up with an engineering degree. If even if you don't end up wanting to be an engineer, people know that you're smart and can like think about problems like intuitively. And that's yeah. super useful. And like, I think that applies to the business perspective as well. You have to work very hard to mess up with an engineering degree. Mm -hmm. You have to work really hard <laughs> against yourself to mess up with an engineering degree. Yeah. And then, then it's not the engineering degree's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, I have a quick just because I'm doing this this morning. Um, uh, do you guys, what, what's your, what's your go-to kind of productivity thing? It's a completely changing topics, but kind of related to managerial stuff. You know, when you're kind of organizing a group, what do you, what do you guys use to, to manage a project? Mm. I feel like I'm going into an ad for something. I'm not, I'm actually just asking. A question. <laughs> well, for podcast team, I use um, Microsoft tasks. Um, and I like it because like for podcasts, I have to see like yeah. where everyone is doing. And so I kind of text them and I, I have like all of the big, like each podcast is separated into like 11 subtasks and I mark yeah. them. So yeah. I kind of, I don't have to keep that memory yeah. in my brain. I can just like mark it down. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I can vouch for the Microsoft tasks. I just got the, the notification a couple of days ago about this podcast and um, here we are recording it now. Cool. Um, yeah, I think that's been really effective as um, someone on the other side, someone who is a part of that team. I think it's been really effective to have that laid out and see where your progress is and where everyone else's is. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, I'm playing around. I mean, like, that's what I have our staff working on, which is why you guys are working on that, too. Um, we pushed it on you like a couple of years back. Um, but I'm always exploring new options and trying to figure out what's easy and transparent for everybody. Um, and I just discovered Smartsheet inside the Google App Suite. And I don't know what it's like. So I was curious if anybody else had done mm. anything with it. I also just found Jamboard. Have you guys seen Jamboard on Google? No, have not. Collaborative whiteboard space. Oh, that sounds fun. Oh, actually, I feel like I might have used that in a class when we were all virtual my first semester. So oh, that's cool. First anyway, COVID one. completely not related <laughs> to this podcast. I'm just kind of curious because I'm playing around with it. Um, I'm, I'm kind of a productivity app junkie and trying to figure out things that, that are good for people and kind of jumping around. But all right. Hey, well, ladies, thank you so much. We really appreciate you doing this. Maya, thank you so much for bringing the conversation. Emily, it's good to see you. Uh, Maya, we'll look forward to seeing you again real soon. And for all of you out there listening, stay tuned. We'll have another episode for you real soon. Thank you.